got something here that I feel like that my viewers will find it to be interesting, to say the least, towards what they're fixing to uh, talk about here. But before, before they do, I want to make a couple pretty strong points. First of all, towards the things that God has showed me in the past that is and has and already is taking place either past tensively or presently. This is all part of those advisories that I was trying to put out to the general public that obviously they didn't want to listen to because the majority of the people around here done already scattered a bunch of lies in the regards towards the individual that's talking to you right now is nuttier than a than a uh, a lunatic. First of all, in my predictions, I predicted that there was going to be a bloody road ahead. That's the era that we're in right now, a bloody road ahead. Shootings and killings and homicides are going up every day on levels that the professionals hadn't seen, I guess, since the early 90s. Also predicted that there was going to be major electrical disturbances. Those things has already occurred or are occurring or have occurred. Pertaining to all the storms, all the blackouts down in Texas last year pertaining to the ice storms. Uh, also the ice storms up here in Kentucky and the various places. These things was going to intensify. And they have. I made a prediction whenever Donald Trump was the United States president on his last year. Whenever there was so much controversy surrounding the illegal immigrants coming over the border. That they hadn't seen nothing yet at that time. That hang around. That that's go only going to intensify was the prediction that I had made. And sure enough that prediction come true too as well. I guess one of the last predictions that I've made is pertaining to the supply chain. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that we are walking off into areas, uncertain areas, on an international global level like we have never seen before. Now, you keep in mind, before I show you what I'm going to show you here, that out of the <coughs> 8 billion people on the planet, soon to be 9, I guess, about two-thirds of them suddenly walked out to the playing field a few years ago and said, we want what the Western world has. We want automobiles. We want cell phones. We want electricity. We want all. We want. We want to be able to travel different places uh, to our destinations. We want the same things that the that the Western world has been accustomed to now for the past sixty, seventy five hundred years. We want washer and dryers. We want automatic lawnmowers, and we want this, and we want that. So because of the demands that suddenly you got two thirds of the planet that has run out to the playing field and said, we want the same thing that, that the American Western world has. It has put a strain on the supply chain that has been tremendous towards what the American people has been accustomed to, to receiving and getting for the past 25, 30 years. Even as recently as just the past, give or take the past 90 days in the middle of this COVID, we've had a major shorting in the automobile industry be because of primarily a different chip that goes into a computer that even though they make the automobile, 
The automobile can't go nowhere, can't run, can't move, because now it's it's stagnated in the in the uh, in the supply chain towards not being able to put a chip into the computer, which has driven up not just one particular uh, marketing in that in that in that field, but also it's driven up the used cars marketing too as well. So if you got a decent used car right now, you probably need to hang on to it rather than go out here and and purchase another you another good used car like you ordinarily do every every three to five years. What I'm saying is this: these things are intensifying on levels that is unbelievable. Just like the fires out west, just like all the intense weather. Phenomenons. I'm going to use the word phenomenons of how that the melting of the glaciers and, and the rising of the oceans and, and various uh, coastal lining areas and, and uh, various islands that are flooding right now and, and uh, the warming of the water, everything is changing is the bottom line that I'm trying to make here in and of its nutshell. And as they're changing, they're not changing for the better. They're changing for the worse. Now, the subject matter that I want to talk about pertaining to the show that's fixing to come on, it's not about football, in which miraculously they made a kickoff, a field goal. I think it, it's, it, if I'm not mistaken, 67 yards. That's just unbelievable for anybody to be able to kick a pigskin that far in between two metal poles, but um, we'll, we'll have to see to verify if, if it's 67 yards or not. I know it's 60-something yards, but anyways, um, as we start to go through these declining changes, put in mind, you got 8 million people, two-thirds of them has stepped out into the playing field and said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We want the washers and dryers to be shipped over here. Our people want washers and dryers too. It's kind of like the two salesmen that was sent over into a place like Africa, metaphorically speaking. And one of the salesmen come back and said, man, you don't want to start a business over there. Don't know them people wear shoes. You won't, you won't be able to, you won't be able to make a dime. They just walk around barefooted. But the other salesman come back and said, wow, we can make a killing. Don't nobody over there wear shoes. Once we turn them on to this product, <clears throat> they'll never look back towards wanting to go barefooted again. So it's in the perspective that you're looking at things that can be the difference between light or darkness, right or wrong, good or bad. Whenever you're fixing to watch the program that you're fixing to watch in regards to these things that I'm talking about in regards towards shortages, supply shortages, there's no doubt for the people that already has extra money, for the people that's got a little bit of money, for the people that's got a little clout, for the people that can do better for themselves, which is basically that top what? I'm going to say 7 to 10% here in America that doesn't just live from paycheck to paycheck. They actually have a little bit of money so that they can go out and stockpile up on stuff that they're fixing to talk about here on TV. But the rest of us, we can't go Christmas shopping in the month of September. We can't go Christmas shopping in the month of October. We have to wait and save up our pennies because things is so tight in the American budgets right now to where we have to look forward to getting that extra discount or that extra break come Black Friday that comes along usually the day after November. Whenever you listen to this program, keep in mind, 
I told you back whenever Donald Trump was president, long about the time that I was telling you about the urge, the sudden surge that was going to come into the southern border pertaining to all the illegals, whenever I told you that the supply chain was going to be strained, I wasn't just blowing smoke. I was trying to help various people towards getting them prepared towards what was going to happen into the future. Now, does this mean that this is what I want to happen into the future? Absolutely not. That's that's ludicrous for people to even think that. Absolutely not. But what I'm saying is this, out of the eight billion people on the planet, I think soon to be nine, this disruption that we've went through because of COVID, people shutting down, people not working, people not being allowed to get out of their house, people going through a mask mandate, people going through this, people going through that. What you're fixing to see is the is the um, ramifications because of all this. And now we've got ships setting out on the water that basically our distributors don't know what to do with. In other words, everything is getting out of keel. Everything is getting out of whack in comparison to the good old days. I'm sure you've heard that song. Nothing but the good old days. Well, I'm just afraid that according to the American standards that we have been adjusted to for the past 15, 20, 25, 30 years, those good old days may very well be coming to an abrupt, quick, a radical end. Especially whenever you look at what I'm talking about right now, pertaining to various items that the American people have been adjusted towards them always being there. You know, we could always count on not only Walmart, I'm just going to use Walmart because they're one of the big retail sellers. We could always count on not only Walmart having the toilet paper, but we can count on Walmart towards being basically a warehouse that supplies and and warehouses the the toilet paper. That way, if out of the blue, we need to go down there and get a package of toilet paper, we can go down there and get some toilet paper. Well, Walmart ain't no longer going to be a warehouse that supplies toilet paper if Walmart can't get the toilet paper to begin with. Once more, I'm not picking on Walmart. I'm just using them for an illustration purposes because they're one of the biggest retails out there or one of the big retailers out there. I think Amazon beat them last month several hundred million dollars in sales. But uh, the program that you're fixing to watch right now is real and it's serious and all it's going to do is add that much more strain and anxiety and hardship into people's lives here in America that has been so spoiled of believing that everything was just at the whip of our hand. All we had to do was, oh, I can get in my automobile, drive down the road, and pick up the supplies that I need. Well, what if you pick up, go down there, and you go to pick up, and there's nothing on the shelves to pick up? And I've done already seen a substantial amount of shelves empty in various places like Walmart. And I'm pretty sure other people has too as well. In other words, you can't settle for this type of cereal. Now you got to settle for this type of cereal. You can't get your favorite cereal because they're out of your favorite cereal. You can't get your favorite this because they're out of the favorite that. Now you have to be willing to settle for the secondary thing, which is, well, if I can't buy what I ordinarily like or drink or 
eat or smell or wear, I'm going to have to settle for this. These adjustments are only going to go worse as we get further into this thing because the supply chain has been disrupted. Please watch. One on the season. Incredible. That's not all, guys. We got a bonus highlight for you. Okay, Baltimore Ravens, the kicker there, Justin uh, Tucker. He set an all time NFL record yesterday. A 66 yarder bounced off the post and in as time expired. The Ravens beat the line. 66 yards. I thought it was 67. 66 yards. That's unbelievable that you can kick a pigskin. 67 yards down the field line and go in between two poles, even though it hit the goal post and bounced its way in. It still made its way in. It still broke the all-time record. And 19 to 17, that kick, by the way, two yards longer than the previous record from 2013. Hit the goal How about post that? and bounced in. That's a little luck, but a lot of skill. Whoever you pull for, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no denying that this has been an incredible season. I mean, it's like lots of good football. Lots of good football. All right, well, let's go to quickly what's become a growing crisis at major ports on both coasts, causing shipping delays and supply shortages for businesses large and small all across this country. NBC's Tom Costello joins us with a look at what's going on and how it may affect everything from your next grocery run to your holiday shopping plans. Hey, Tom, good morning. Yeah, good morning. You're going to pay for it. This is Main Street USA at your Main Street, wherever you live. You're already seeing prices moving higher. The entire supply chain is stretched right now. Ports and warehouses and trucks reeling because we have such massive shipping delays. So now, heading into the Christmas holidays, we're going to see prices moving higher. Business owners are urging you to buy now and be patient. Off the coast of Los Angeles, a truly stunning sight. Nearly 60 container ships in the water, anchored all the way to the horizon. Precious goods and supplies sitting idle for days. And off the East Coast, data shows nearly 20 ships waiting to get into New York City. When the world's manufacturers came back online, there was a surge in products that were ordered and just a finite amount of capacity of ships of trucks, of warehouses, the infrastructure that exists can't handle the volume. The cargo bottleneck is just the latest hiccup in an already struggling supply chain. With labor shortages in trucking and warehouses causing unprecedented delays. Big retailers like Costco and Home Depot have started contracting their own ships to bring goods to U.S. shores. With Costco recently announcing it will be putting limits on key items for consumers, like toilet paper, bottled water, and cleaning supplies. Also at risk for many retailers, popular holiday gift items like TVs, toys, and sneakers. Small business owners are also feeling the pinch, like Steve's Seagull, whose furniture inventory is consistently stuck at sea. Once the ship gets unloaded, it has to go to the distributor. And once it gets there, do they have anybody to unload the truck, the container? Probably not. Alex Whitland sells all-natural dog treat mix. Right now, everything from his silicone treat molds to the jars for his popsicle mix are getting stuck in transit. Maybe four or five months ago, it would have taken 45 days to get here. Um, now, you know, could be 60, could be as much as 90. <laughs> With no end to the delays in sight, Alex is now ordering all of his holiday inventory as early as possible. I certainly have patience with small businesses. Um, things are challenging. Everything is slowed down and we're all uh, we're all doing the best we can. Experts say consumers should make sure they're stocked up on all the essentials at home and make a plan to order holiday gifts as soon as possible. Now, once more, what did it, what did he just, what did the commentator just say? Stock up. Stock up. In other words, hoard. Well, that's what the, the one percenters up to seven to 10 percenters here in America is going to do. Those that has a little bit of money, those that, that can let go of some extra things. They're going to do just exactly that, regardless of whether it's food, toilet paper, or whatever. In the meantime, in the meantime, the working class, the poor class, the 
disability and the retired class are still going to have to maintain their regular routine structure. Towards, I've got to pay this bill. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've already made a commitment towards having to pay for this boat or pay for this RV or pay for this extra vacation slot that I've, that I've paid for. And, and, or I've got to uh, pay for, for my child's uh, education. And, and they put aside a certain amount of money to do that. These people that are in those predicaments cannot go out and hoard. And it's very, very unfair whenever you have your commentators out there on your in your media saying, buy now, buy now, buy now, hoard, hoard, hoard. That's what they're basically saying to everybody, which is just going to add more insult to the misery on down the road of those that can't afford to buy now, whenever they do have a little bit of money, the product is going to be pushed so high out of range as far as the uh, supply and demand, and there's more demand than there is a supply, so naturally the consumer is going to rise the prices to the point that they're not going to be able to buy it anyway. In other words, it's a snowball effect. It's a snowball effect that now is starting to be realistical in the eyes of many pertaining to the supplies. And it doesn't matter if it's the supplies of, of, of food or the supplies of, of paper products or the supplies of soft line uh, pertaining to clothes. These things that they're talking about is going to add that much more misery, and stress in the people's lives. We have been spoiled as a nation over here in America, probably more so than any other nation on the planet. And now it's come time that we're all going to have to tighten our belts other than the one to seven percenters that can afford to hoard or go out and buy whatever that they want to still buy. You see the imbalances there? You see the unfairness there? It's very unfair. Whenever you have one group of people that that can halfway live out a normal life and still pay for their boat or their RV or their child's uh, education, while the other group, while the other group suffers immensely because of group number one, group number two is sure enough suffering. I have never seen things this dysfunctional as I have today since this disease has hit this planet. And I'm pretty sure that if these supply chains that we're looking at now are this disruptive this time of the year before Christmas, can you only imagine how disruptive that they're going to be right before and during Christmas? You know, I was just thinking the other day, I was in Walmart and I went down the Christmas line where they have the Christmas trees and the Santa Claus things. A matter of fact, I bought me a little item yesterday. It wasn't much, but I could tell that they was making a run on this particular item. It was a, a metal, a metal sign that had a picture of a baby fawn with a Christmas decoration around the, the baby fawn. <clears throat> and I can't remember for sure if it had a little girl in it or not, giving the, the baby fawn a hug, but I could tell that they didn't have but one more item left. So if I was going to buy this item, I said to myself, you need to buy it now. Because obviously they're, they're making a run on this particular item. But I thought to myself as I went around another corner and I started hearing these enchanting songs that everybody hears during Christmas about peace on earth. 
peace on earth, peace on earth. And I thought to myself, my God, where has the peace on earth gone? We're more disruptive, more confused, more disoriented as a society, not just here in America, but throughout the planet, than what we've ever been, which is going just the opposite direction towards peace and utopia that it talks about in some of the covenants, the promises that has come from our Heavenly Father and the predictions out of the Bible. That was almost like a, a flood of reality as I'm sitting here listening all these Christmas carols about peace on earth. And I'm thinking to myself, just the very opposite towards my God. Instead of it being peace on earth, it's turned into horror on earth. It's turned into hell in a lot of people's lives on earth. Just last week, an individual down in Memphis, my son was telling me about it, was working somewhere, barely making a little over minimum wage, and he lost his job, and he goes in and shoots about 10 or 12 people, 13 people, and kills two or three of them. Just over the tension of losing his, his job that I'm pretty sure that he could have probably re reestablished himself somewhere else just within a matter of hours, if not days, because it was a secondary um, substandard job to begin with, just barely making over minimum wage. But because the tensions was so intensifying in this individual's life, and because the only thing that he or she could see, I think it was a he, was doom and gloom, in other words, he'd done already strain to make his last car payment. Now he's not going to be able to make the car payment. Sure enough, this time, whenever you have individuals that is this close to the edge of the cliff and all of a sudden something disruptive happens in their lives, they cannot deal with life on the same level that most people have been adapted towards dealing with life, and it, and you usually deal with it in a very, very sad factor. The fact of the matter is you've lost your job. Now you're not going to make your payment. Now you're going to have to deal with more uh, telephone calls. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the man that you took out the, the loan on pertaining to the collector, now he's going to be calling you every five seconds or possibly even coming to your door, knocking on your door. I mean, it just opens up a whole array of different problems whenever you are already this close to the edge to begin with. And some of the people that are dealing with society this way that have already been pushed off to that edge of that cliff, sadly, are going to wind up going off the cliff. And in the meantime, if people like you or me, innocent bystanders, that are standing at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong set of circumstances, your life can be in tragedy because now somebody else's life has fallen into tragedy and because they don't know how to handle this, this is what happens. You have chaotic moments that are snowballing here in America and throughout the planet. We as a society are going to have to pay attention more so towards being vigilant and understanding how people feel, what's going on around us, the circumstances around us, and you're going to have to be, I'm going to use the word, um, you're going to have to not be a penny wise and a dollar foolish, number one. Number two, you're going to have to remarkably intensify your survival skills the same way that you would if you was up into the woods of, uh, at, let's say, Matt, um, Montana somewhere, and all of a sudden you realize that you're up there with a bunch of bears, 
and mountain lions, snakes, and other wildlife activity that can not only harm you, but can kill you. Your survival skills during this time are going to be challenged. No matter if you're the actual person that is at that cliff, and all of a sudden you lose your job for whatever reason, <clears throat> or you're just a substandard independent individual that's at the wrong place at the wrong time. And the next thing you know, you get caught up in somebody else's big hella below. Once more, it's the Bible fulfilling itself towards living in perilous times. Once more, the people that I spent so much time with, going door to door, church to church, community to community, county to county, state to state, did not want to support a ministry that supported wide world utopian peace. They didn't want to back the founder of the Windmill Ministries missions. And because of it, this is going to be hell here on earth until we can reevaluate and reassess what's going on. My predictions was accurate about there being electrical disturbances. My predictions was accurate towards a bloody road ahead. My predictions was accurate towards the sudden surge of the illegal immigrants. And now my predictions is right pertaining to the supply chains that are going to be challenged in months ahead, not just here in America, but throughout the world. You wonder how come every time that I end my message in saying, Good luck to all of us. God bless America. God bless America's troops. And good luck to all of us. That's the reason why that it has been instilled up into me by saying this. Good luck to all of us. I bumped into a guy last night being at Walmart in Union City, Tennessee. And I noticed he had a hat on. It said, live lucky. It said, live lucky on one side. The other side said, live lucky. And and in the front of it, I think it had some sort of a, a gambling casino or something. And I'm pretty sure he probably picked this particular hat up at, at some sort of a gambling casino, regardless whether he was in Tupelo, Mississippi, or up in Carbondale on the boat, or over on the other side of the river in the uh, in the metropolis area over there in Missouri. But um, I thought to myself as I was looking at his hat, live lucky, live lucky. And, you know, I, I wish people luck on the end of our program. But the type of luck that I'm talking about isn't the type of luck pertaining to the luck of chance. The luck that I'm talking about is the fact that you've made the right decisions in life through your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ, and that it puts things in the right perspective towards the Bible declaring that in the last days to pray that you're worthy to escape these things that are going to be fallen upon to the planet, or pray that you're capable to endure these things that are going to be fallen upon to the planet, indicating, listen to me, indicating that these things would, in fact, be fallen upon to the planet. Now, who would have ever thought, let's say three years ago, whenever Donald Trump had the economy up, huffing and puffing and going in such of a way before we wound up having this last election that turned into nothing more than a free-for-all, that turned into something else that the American people was going to have to endure or go through. But who would have thought now, three years later, during and through a pandemic, COVID, that now we're having to deal with the things that we're dealing with 
on the supply chain channels. The cargo ships that have pulled up to the United States ports and can't be unloaded because they don't have proper labor to be able to unload them. If I was the president of the United States of America and I could foresee what was going on here, I would immediately call out those who was already being being supplied by either state or federal government funds pertaining to the National Guard. And I personally would call out the National Guard to go in these areas, regardless whether it was driving trucks, regardless whether it was operating heavy equipment, regardless whether it was doing whatever. If I was the president, I would be able to look into the future and say, wow, this is only this problem is only going to create a million zillion more problems. So to keep things stable, I would try to cut this off at, at the try to cut it off at the, at the chase. But I don't think that we may possibly not have an administration that can look beyond the forest and seeing the trees of recognizing these type of problems, just like if somebody would have foreseen the problems down on the coast, the southern, not the coast, but the southern border area, I truly believe that we would not have to be experiencing and seeing the things that we're experiencing and seeing right now on national TV pertaining to the thousands and thousands of immigrants that are coming over here illegally, that now the system is broken and people don't know what to do with. Once more, we have all these command centers in every state that are put there primarily to help that state in case that state winds up having a natural catastrophe of some sort, regardless whether it's an earthquake, an ice storm, major fires, or whatever. We put these things in proper perspective. That way, once, if there is an emergency, we can call upon to the labor force of the people that's drawing a check, regardless whether they're weekend warriors or whatever, to be able to help the strains in these areas. I cannot see where our leadership is doing that right now. Now, they've done a wonderful, remarkable job whenever there was hints. I'm going to use the word hints that there was possibly going to be another uprising pertaining to a protest march that was going to be happening up at the Capitol building, give or take about a week and a week or two weeks ago. Boy, did they ever call in everybody and their brother towards coming down in 18 wheelers and putting up a big, shiny, brand new fence that once more, I'm pretty sure that the American people paid for in some form or fashion. These people ain't going to work for free. They're not going to put on their, their artillery and come down there and, and use labor force towards putting up a fence. Somebody had to pay for that. Well, whenever you weigh out the balances, the lesser of the two evils, right now, because of things being so abnormal, they made a practical decision up at the White House towards bringing in extra forces and doing this. So we rather pay one price than they would another, correct? That's the way you keep things running in a halfway unstable environment. Well, how come our same officials can't see the problem that's occurring on our ports? How come they can't look upon this in the same format towards understanding that one problem adds to another problem that adds to it that creates another problem? Just like the individual down here in Memphis, Tennessee, that lost his job. A minimum wage paying job. Lost his job. And within a matter of hours, the switch flipped, he snapped, and the next thing you know, 
about 15 or 20 people wound up in, in the center of his atmosphere that was totally innocent of what was going on, but they wound up suffering the consequences on account of it. We, as a surviving society, are going to have to become awakened and alert to these unforeseeables if we're going to micromanage our way out of this darkness back into the light. It's going to take good, sound, stern leadership, a people that's got good common sense, kind of like me bringing up the fact towards all the all the uh, waterways out west pertaining to the water supply out there of all the lakes and the reservoirs that basically has dried up some places, 65, 75% of what their normal water supply is has now dwindled down to about 20, 25, 30%. Can people not foresee that there's going to be a problem if all the water is gone and now you're that same supply chain that was supplying, let's say, four or five million people in Levada, part of Arizona and California. Now, if you no longer have that water to supply those people's needs, can people that's in leadership not see that that's going to create a problem? Just like the problem with the ships being out on the on the coastal areas that are just sitting there, basically, I guess they're twiddling their thumbs, wondering when they're going to get the green light of coming in and being, in a, being able to unload. This is something that can be addressed immediately if we had good, sound leadership. That I'm beginning to wonder, like looking at the illegal immigrants coming over the coast, I'm beginning to wonder just exactly what type of government that we're working under right now that is allowing for these things to intensify and get worse and worse and worse, even though the problem is right in front of your very eyes and you can see what's going on. I repeat, you can see what's going on, but you're not addressing the problem. You're not nipping it at the bud. Regardless whether it be the seaports that can't get their cargo unloaded or it be the problems pertaining to the COVID that was coming around the corner that obviously we mismanaged, just like mismanaging the problem down on the southern coast. How come we have people that's in charge that we pay big, big dollar bills to? I'm talking about some of these people probably make over $150,000, maybe $250,000 a year to sit around and make these type of decisions for us. How come we have people in these positions that cannot make the proper protocol decisions in seeing things coming down up the horizon or down the pike in the favor of normalcy? How come? I'm going to tell you what I think. I think they're blinded. I think they're deceived. I think they're up there taking on their good, good, uh, favorable money-making strategies. And they really don't have the ability to foresee different problems that are going on, regardless whether it be COVID, regardless whether it be the problems on the border, or the problems now that we're looking at pertaining to the cargo ships pulling up at U.S. ports that can't get the green light towards going in and distributing their goods. There's going to have to, it's going to have to stop this idioticness this 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 uh, 
autopilot that we have put America on pertaining to things the this the, the cruise control needs to be taken off and we need to have good sound leadership of people that can make good sound decisions that way one pr problem will not create into another problem that will add into another problem that could possibly lead into another problem of an individual just like down in Memphis that was already obviously on the edge that wound up losing his job for whatever reason. I don't know what, what was going on, but he lost his job. And within a matter of hours, he snapped. And consequently, there was several people that died and several people that got injured. How come we do not have good, strong leadership here in America that can entail and foresee these things coming down the pike? They're blinded and they're deceived. Just like how come we did not have good sound leadership the day of or before 9-11 that could have obviously picked up a telephone call or got on a circuit board pertaining to a computer and resignated some sort of email towards telling somebody else the problems that they're foreseeing and looking at that could escalate into another problem. If we're going to fine-tune this machine over here towards our survival instincts, going back to what I first said earlier, we're going to have to be just as an individual out in the woods of Montana somewhere, knowing that we're no longer in the same set of circumstances that we was before we wound up in that woods up in Montana. And now we've got things, predators around us, that are going to affect our lives, and more than likely, they're going to affect it in a negative way for you to start preparing for the worst. If you don't have a gun, make a jabbery. Make a jab. Make a, get a stick. Do something to survive in the circumstances that you're in. And I'm just using that as an illustration, metaphorically speaking, of an individual that all of a sudden finds himself in a desperate situation and they don't know how to respond or react because of it. Thank you for listening. Good luck to all of us as we repeat our message again and again and again. God bless America. God bless our troops. And God bless our endeavors. It's just the latest hiccup in an already struggling supply chain. With labor shortages in trucking and warehouses causing unprecedented delays. Big retailers like Costco and Home Depot have started contracting their own ships to bring goods to U.S. shores. With Costco recently announcing it will be putting limits on key items for consumers, like toilet paper, bottled water, and cleaning supplies. Also at risk for many retailers, popular holiday gift items like TVs, toys, and sneakers. Small you... business owners are also... And did you hear like what Steve Siegel? Let's back up for a second. Let's back up. Did you hear what the individual just said? That they are going to start limiting supplies because people can foresee this problem. Listen to it again. Causing unprecedented delays. Big retailers like Costco and Home Depot have started contracting their own ships to bring goods to U.S. shores. With Costco recently announcing it will be putting limits on key items for consumers, like toilet paper, bottled water, and cleaning supplies. For consumers, like toilet paper, bottled water, and cleaning supplies. On key items for consumers. With Costco recently announcing it will be putting limits on key items for consumers, like toilet paper, bottled water, and cleaning supplies. All right, I want to stop right there. It's already done reek down to the consumer. Now the consumer can see what's fixing to happen. Now the consumer is making adjustments towards trying to soften the blow. That way... It's not going to be quite as harsh as what it's going to be pertaining to the worst case scenario. How come it is reached down to the consumer towards making these decisions? And how come in the upper levels of government, they haven't done already? Because I've been told about this shipping problem now for, I guess, days or weeks 
ago. How come we don't have government officials that's already stepped into the playing field and said, you know what, because this is happening, we need to do this. We need to get our men and women in uniform, our weekend war so soldiers out, and we need to make sure that those shipping lanes are moving. We need to make sure that there's people taking on this cargo and it's getting put into the areas that it needs to be put in. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there was a problem just the other day pertaining to a major issue towards not having enough drivers to bring fuel to the gas stations so that it would help normalize people's everyday affairs. What did the government do? They unrestricted a lot of restrictions upon to the truck drivers so that they could get more truck drivers into the problem in starting distributing fuel to various gas stations so that we could all not feel the brunt of the blow like we're like we would have had if they didn't do this because they foreseen this problem happening, coming into existence. How come we can't do the same thing pertaining to our cargo ships pulling up at our U.S. ports? That's my question. That's the $64,000 question that I have today in trying to normalize and keep things normal here in America to the point that we don't see as many people going off the deep end like the individual did down in Memphis, and I keep using him for an illustration. My God, I could probably use thousands right now of people that's done similar acts towards trying to eliminate the stress load upon people's lives. That way, come Christmas, maybe you can afford to buy a Christmas tree. That way, come Christmas, you can have adequate toilet paper in your bathroom. That way, come Christmas, you can give a gift to your loved one, your granddaughter, or your daughter, or your, your wife, or your children. We're going to have to smarten up. It's a no longer a principles of working harder. It's now become the principles of working smarter. And if we're not smart enough to identify where we are as a nation, as a society, the struggling scenario situations are only going to intensify because of various people that's sitting around with their hands underneath their laps. I don't know if this message is going to do any good. I hope to God that it will towards normalizing the affairs pertaining to the hardships that is falling up into our lives. And like, I, like I've told you before, it's coming near a neighborhood near you, just like the Walmart slogan. And if you think that you're escapable, if you think that you're going to be able to live your life as, as a normal human being that was pre-COVID, good luck out there for you to be able to do that. Even the most powerful is the powerful. Even the most richest of the rich. Even the very one percenters. In some degree are going to feel the effects of this in one form or the other. Because things is no longer the same old, same old. We're now dealing with situations that we wasn't dealing with before pre-COVID. Just like we're dealing with situations today pertaining to our, our security systems, uh, U.S. Marshals on U.S. flights. We're dealing with things now today that is costing the consumers more money pre-9-11. We didn't have fire marshals going on every flight before 9-11. We didn't have all these other security cameras and devices that now we have now versus pre-9-11. So what has 9-11 done? It has brought a burden into people's lives. It has strained the system. It has made things more complicated. Complicated or just like the problems with the COVID. COVID has put a strain on the medical resources. COVID has put a strain on the labor medical resources. COVID has put a strain on various subject matters pertaining to respirators and nurses and doctors being overwhelmed. Um, it has put a strain on 
other types of things pertaining to oxygen and, and, and et cetera in various places. I mean, we are having to, and I hate to use this as a scenario, but I'm going to, we are going to have to adjust as a society that at one time we were joggling, let's say three balls and keeping in unices to the point that now we're having to double that. We're having to jo joggle six or eight or 10 balls. We're having to become more skillful in the things that we was already doing and intensifying them into the things that we wasn't doing them, wasn't doing if we're going to be a surviving, thriving society, regardless whether we be the American race or some other culture in some other continent. Because it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Out of the 8 billion people on the planet, the supply and demand has now risen in areas that we could not ever even think about beginning to understand pre-COVID. Everything is based around supply and demand, supply and demand. If you got too much of a supply, more so than the demand, guess what happens to the price of the supply? It dwindles, it goes way down to the point that they can't give it away. But guess what happens on the other level if you have more of a demand than you do a supply? The, pl the price doubles, maybe even triples. It's kind of like the laws of gravity. That's what happens in society whenever based around the laws of supply and demand. And I think anybody out there that's listening to my particular thing right here can understand that. And if we're not smart enough to realize that, it's going to basically be the very straw that's going to finish us off, that's going to break the camel's back. And I say that to try to help people, not in trying to hurt them. And making adjustments in our leadership, that way they can identify the problems, just like the gas problems, taking special uh, restrictions off of the drivers, so that we can make sure that our gas is put into the areas that need to be put there to help normalize society. Also at risk for many retailers, popular holiday gift items like TVs, toys, and sneakers. Small business owners are also feeling the pinch, like Steve Siegel, whose furniture inventory is consistently stuck at sea. Once the ship gets unloaded, it has to go to the distributor. And once it gets there, do they have anybody to unload the truck? The container, probably not. They would if they would if I was the president, because I would be able to identify this problem immediately and say, "Okay, we're going to have to call on emergency resources to make sure that we handle this problem effectively." And I would have already had various men and women out on the ports that they're drawing a check anyways, they're getting paid every month. For, for being in this volunteer National Guard services to have them out there doing what needs to be done. That way, the ripple effect won't be as harsh. Alex Whitland sells all-natural dog treat mix. Right now, everything from his silicone treat molds to the jars for his popsicle mix are getting stuck in transit. Maybe four or five months ago, it would have taken... 45 days to get here um, now, you know, could be 60, could be as much as 90. With no end. This is our new reality. This is our new reality. And if you're still walking around in denialing about the new reality that we're in, kind of like people that are still in denial about the COVID shot, Towards it having having a, a pattern of proving itself that it does effectively help society more than it hurts society. I mean, if you're not willing to wake up to reality until it's too late, 
then the odds are it's going to be too late. To the delays in sight, Alex is now ordering all of his holiday inventory as early as possible. I certainly have patience with small businesses. Um, things are challenging. Everything is slowed down, and we're all uh, we're all doing the best we can. Experts say consumers should make sure they're stocked up on all the essentials at home and make a plan to order holiday gifts as soon as possible. So if you had something in mind this holiday season for uh, a family member, a, a child, go ahead and secure that now. Do not wait. Chances are that it won't be available in the store after Black Friday. All right, so Tom, the big question is, which items will we yeah. be paying more for? Well, it really depends on what you're looking for, but you can bank on prices moving higher. We're already seeing prices up 20 to 25 percent, and experts are saying, listen, there may not be enough artificial Christmas trees in just a few weeks. So if you need an artificial Christmas tree, buy now because they may not be around in just a matter of weeks or even a, a couple of months. Wow. Okay. All right, Tom. Uh, thank you so much. Don't get that debate started. I know. <laughs> yeah. like, you don't even know. Don't stir the pot. Yeah. Well, when we come back on this Monday, the head of Instagram himself. Adam Assir is going to join us exclusively. We're going to get Adam's take on that alarming report on the app's impact on the mental health of young people, especially girls. Also, he has some news to share about the actions that are being taken to fix some of the problems. That's right after this. When you're driving a Lincoln, stress seems to evaporate into thin air, which leaves it. A... I'm going to leave it at that. We can address some of these other issues later. But right now, I felt like that this was essential towards addressing this one. Good luck to all of us, and shalom.